Hey guys, and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. This week we're going to talk about a teeny tiny little hovering loach, the rosy loach or Petruichthy species rosy. Sometimes you'll see it um, listed in a hobby as Tuberoschistura aracensis, which is totally wrong, but you'll see it a lot. It's also called the Burmese rosy loach, and they are super tiny, super adorable, and super awesome for a small planted tank. So let's take a look. So this is my quarantine for the little rosy loaches. Um, I'm also gonna take you up to my daughter's room to look in her little three gallon tank to show you what they look like when they're settled in. I've dropped a pellet in here and you can see there's quite a little mass of them hanging out uh, to eat. And I've just done that so that we can see them a little easier. Now males of this species only get about an inch or slightly under and the females get about an inch and a quarter. They're super tiny, super outgoing, and super awesome. I have them in this quarantine with a bunch of Boraris, which you'll see in there as well. Now these guys are found along the Celestichthys margaritatus, or CPDs, um, in permanently flooded grasslands that, that were formed from dams made by people who are farming. And they're found mainly in eastern Myanmar in shallow water that's super transparent, but it has a lot of plants, which is awesome, and it makes them work out really, really well in our planted aquariums. Now, the water doesn't generally have much of a flow, but these guys can take flow. They're extremely versatile, taking a range of temperatures from 68 to 78 and a pH range of 6 to 8. As you can see, they're really easy to feed, excepting pellets as well as small meaty foods like microworms, baby brine, daphnia, cyclops, or even crushed flake or micro pellets dropped into the tank. These guys are absolutely a species that do best in groups, the more the merrier. I like to keep them in groups of 20 or more, although at lo as long as you have about eight, they're pretty happy. And they're really unique from other loaches in that they hover in the mid water. And when we go up to Clelia's tank, I'll show you guys that more. Now, I've bred these guys a few times by accident, and what I've noticed is that the males, which are the guys that get like pink to red in color with that strong black lateral line, chase the females, which are larger, rounder, and generally speckled in appearance. And they chase them, chase them, chase them, and then do like a T formation, and then the female will drop a bunch of eggs, um, which hatch in about 24 hours, and then you need to supplement them with then you need to supplement them with uh, microworms about day three. Now, if you don't put them in a breeding tank and you don't pull the eggs, it's not that likely that you're gonna have many surviving fry because they will predate on the eggs. But if you pull the eggs or pull the parents from the breeding tank after you see uh, the breeding behavior, then you're likely to have a pretty decent yield. Now, as you can see, these guys do great with the little micro rasboras. They're awesome with Boraris, they're awesome with to nick these, they're awesome with micro divario, micro rasbora, trigonostigmas, any of those little tiny peaceful fish, they'll do really well with. They're good as well with some of the wild bettas as well as darios. And I know I say it every week, but these truly are one of my favorite fish. I just find them to be so entertaining. They hang out mid water, they group together, they're pretty directional. Now, all in all, just super fun fish. Now I'm going to take you up to Clelia's tank so you can see how they behave in a more structured setup. So this is Clelia's little tank that she's done all by herself and after her betta jumped ship. Shortly after the last update we, you know, it took her a few weeks but then she decided to restock from the nano species I have in the fish room. And what we chose is little Boraris, rosy loaches and some shrimp for this little three gallon tank. Now these guys, these little cubes are pretty challenging to stock. Um, but as you can see, this is a really active, fun tank. And it's one of my favorite stocking suggestions for these little tanks. You can see the rosy loach is just playing in the center of the water, which is what I think makes them so cool. Just really fun, active fish. And you can see how cute they are. 
And you can also see their scale next to those Boraris and there was just, there's a full size orange shrimp in there as well as an Amano on the rock in the foreground. So these guys are really petite and as you can see I think she has eight of them in here. Really, really outgoing when housed properly. So a very exciting, adorable, active fish to add to one of these small planted tanks. See the males have that dark lateral line right there. That's it next to that shrimp. You can see they're about an inch. Now a lot of times when these guys come in, they're extremely thin. But luckily they're really easy to feed and fatten up. You can see hers are looking super good. Nice and round, nice round bellies. So in Clelia's tank, she largely feeds flake and a little bit of pellets and occasionally a, a frozen treat. But you can see the males have those dark lateral lines. And there's a female in the foreground as well who's a lot less colorful and doesn't have that strong lateral line. Now, it is entirely possible with the way Clelia has this tank aquascape that she could start to see fry at some point. And I've seen these boys chasing that female, which, which means they're having spawning behavior. That's the female on the left, and the males have that really dark line. But you can see that the scale between the rosy loaches, the bararis, the shrimp, and all these fine plants really, really works in this limited footprint. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and also don't forget to stop by my Facebook as well as my website MsJinx.com where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. I have gotten some really generous donations over the past week and my mind's a little blown so thanks guys. It's getting harder and harder. Um, but no matter what, you guys will always get a couple different um, videos a week. But no matter what, I'll make sure you guys always get at least two videos a week.